Chile, Vice Chancellor Figno, New Delhi, uh, other uh, my colleague panelists on the DAS, distinguished invitees, invitees and uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Very good afternoon to all of you. Particularly, I appreciate the digital learning series of summits that are organizing, particularly promoting digital learning among the uh, institution across the country. Uh, particularly, the any vision of any institution should be providing access. The Government of India policy is to provide access to the needy people in the country. And equity is, means taking all the people across the stakeholders, particularly deprived sections of society. And quality and relevance of the education is important for any higher education institution. Improving technology, teaching learning practices with technology. We, we have been using teaching learning practices, but we need to interface with the ICT to enable them to have a more understanding capacity among student community and particularly knowledge creation. Actually, universities are meant for knowledge creation. Industries are meant for wealth creation. So we should have a difference between these two. Wealth is important, knowledge is also important. So we need to interface with these two institutions, industry as well as university. Innovation ecosystem. Unfortunately, in our country, innovation ecosystem is to build up. Suppose if you go to many universities across the USA, particularly Stanford University, MIT, the innovation ecosystem is there. If you take Stanford University, there are 46 incubation centers are there. Innovation is the key because students to be inculcated innovation system in there. Because our students are very talented, don't undermine their capacity. But somebody has to drive them to have innovate. That's more important for us. And capacity building and competencies. Because on most of the universities, directors or principals, the capacity building is important. Competent levels are important. Unless we have a competency, we cannot drive the faculty. Unless faculty is good, they cannot drive the student. So these capacity building competencies are very important. And uh, we should not underestimate this. Similarly, research outcomes. So unfortunately, the, if you take last 10 years, the research outcomes are very meager in our country. Maybe if you have a large number of PhDs are there, publications are there, but the application wise, uh, uh, I think not even 2% are utilized for industry purpose, outcomes of the research. Particularly if you take the, I think morning session also, Professor Pillay and other uh, panelists in the DAS, they were speaking about the gross enrollment ratio. Uh, this is important for India because the, we have 55 million youngsters are there between age group of 18 to 23 years. And we are only taking, out of 5.5 crores, we are only taking one crore of students to higher education. So we need to go a long way, particularly uh, bringing them to the higher education fold. So 11 to 12 percent is present, and Government of India, by 11th plan, targeting for about 15 percent. 15 percent achieving the gross enroll ratio, we required about 50,000 crores from government is spending. So only government alone cannot do, that's why private players are very important. They have a greater role to play in this country. So if you take the USA, 89%, Australia, 80%, and you can see the figures. And uh, we are down the line. And world average is 23%, world average. Even we are below the average as uh, gross enrollment ratio is concerned. I've been talking about many universities has to come in, thousand universities, innovative universities. But you, private players are very important to bridge the gap. Particularly, current status of higher education is concerned. We have a government-funded universities are concerned, either state, uh, central universities or state universities. We have about 348. And we have about deemed to be universities, about 82. And uh, private universities, state governments are regulated, like Rajasthan, other states, they're coming with a private universities bill. Only within the state, they are to operate, about 25. And most of the universities in India, we have affiliating system is there. Nowhere in the world, they have affiliation system. Or the only country have a affiliation system. For example, my university, one of the largest technologies in the country, I have 486,000 students affiliated to me. I have 300 engineering colleges, 100 pharmacy, apart from 150 MTech colleges, large number. So affiliating system is the one bothering because each institution to become autonomous and they should take up rather than affiliating to university. We have engineering institution in, in India, we have 3,600 3, plus. And uh, student tech is presently in India, 13 lakh students are admitted in engineering at the intake level first year. And if you take higher education universities, 1 crore 12 lakh students are admitted. That comes to around 11 to 12 percent in the country. And higher education challenges are concerned. Access is more important. As a policymaker, government of India, they want access to all the deserving students. 
then equity. We have to take all the sections of the society into fold. Third one is quality and relevance. These are important as stipulated by the government. Key challenges are removing boundaries. We have many barriers are there. We have crossed the boundaries. Then we need to do something for the our younger generation. Scaling up resources. So intake is a restriction is there. Our own universities intake, if you take uh, very limited. So if you take uh, foreign universities like USA, on campus 50,000 student, 100,000 students will be there. Very large big universities. Unfortunately, we are not take up because all of the you always fight among hostels and that's why they don't want to increase the capacity in universities because infrastructure limitations are there. Sc scaling up resources and fixed budget framework that is hindering the progress in our country. Redesigning education as a service. Uh, we also similarly, emphasis should be lifelong learning. Learning should be a continuous process. Building strategies, alliances, industry in foreign universities important for us. Similarly, achieving institutional advantage. Uh, I'm rushing to because time given is only five minutes. So the uh, strategies, strategic planning is concerned. We have a need to have a global networking. Many universities required, they should be given, Professor Pillai chairman is also mentioning, universities should be given autonomy. Unfortunately, they are working under a political system. No vice chancellor is allowed to do anything without permission of the government. So restrictions are there. So we need to have a global networking. Suppose if you want to go for five days abroad, I need to take permission from government. We write to three months before, and you don't get it one day before also, you don't get permission. This is what the system in country. So global networking is important, strategic alliances, technology-enabled learning, particularly e-content, because the most of the people in our age, uh, people, they say, the chalk and blackboard is concept is the best. No doubt it's the best. But today, students are very intelligent. We have to make them learn, learning. Learning-centric is important. So the, I, you have to use the technology. But today, mobile technology are using, mobile communication. Why are you using? Because you want to be user-friendly. Similarly, technology ought to interface with the education system, then only learning will be complete. E-content and resource-based learning is important aspect. Similarly, research collaborations. We are shy of collaborating with other universities across the world because our competency, we think that is low. So we should foster collaboration, research collaborations, demand-driven program. Suppose we have a today, we talk about engineering. We have a computer networks, is the embedded system, is the VLSA, is there, CAD CAM is there. So the demand-driven courses we should promote. They say, unfortunately, we have to apply AACT. AACT universities, they don't give permission. So they, they don't start the courses. If they start courses, you have to give scholarship to the PG student. These are hindrances. Why should you put all these restrictions? Allow the institution to excel. So these are some of the problems we are facing. Achieve active industry, act, in act, academy interface. Industry doesn't come to university because they think that competence levels are not there with us. So when they have a problem, they only they come to us. If they don't have a problem, they don't come to us. So industry, they want, isn't it? Unless competence levels is there, why should they come to university? So technology incubation, I was mentioning tech. Today, microelectronics lab in Stanford University, 